Hi, everyone. Welcome to our session. Uh, today, our topic is how KVM-based hybrid deployments powers uh, Baidon's biggest day ever. Uh, Zhengwei and I would complete the session together. We are from the infrastructure team of Baidon. Uh, first, I want to introduce our company a little bit. Here is the global uh, footprint of our company. You may have not heard about the Baidon, but uh, you may have heard about TikTok, a popular uh, short video application. Uh, we have 600 million daily active users all over the world. And TikTok is also the user of the hybrid uh, cloud we all introduced today. First, I want to uh, talk about the agenda of our session. Firstly, I will introduce the background of our session. Uh, next, I will talk about the tech decisions we've made. So why virtualization, why not other solutions? And Junwei will share some improvements and some work we have done. Uh, at last, we'll show some of our achievements. First is the backgrounds. Um, at this time of last year, we ran into a sweet pain. Uh, that is, our business is growing quite fast. That brings more. That brings us more users, but also uh, more challenges for the instructor. Team, as you know, that the Spring Festival Gala is the biggest Chinese uh, traditional festival events. Uh, billions of people will watch the TV show at Chinese traditional uh, Eve, Ch uh, Chinese Year Eve, and Baidan sponsored the events last year. This brings us a real problem. Uh, so all the physical uh, resources has uh, used out, uh, but. We have sponsored the event, uh, the event so uh, many users will come to our applications at the peak hours. Uh, we need to find millions of cores in the short term to prepare for it. So, but there are some good news. You may know that TikTok is a, a short video application, so we have a lot of storage servers. Uh, the CPU and memory usage is quite low on those object storage servers. Um, so we need to find a way to take advantage of those resources. We think that hybrid deployment is the answer. So to make usage of the CPU and memory within a running server, it's just like cut a cake in flight. We don't want the uh, users and the services feel the turbulence, especially for the host users that has run for several years. Uh, uh, maybe from the start of our company. Uh, so the isolation of various uh, resources is quite important, such as the CPU scheduler, the memory usage and the management, and also the I.O. and many, many other aspects. So uh, next I will introduce why we choose virtualization. Actually, at that time, we have uh, several solutions we can choose, such as the virtualization and the C group, uh, here is the disclaimer. I'm not saying that this group or other solutions is not good, but the thing is you need to find out what is suitable for your situation. Uh, as I mentioned before, we need to complete the hybrid deployment without any harm to the host services. Those services may have existed for several years, so the kernel we got varies a lot. We may have 10 versions of the kernel. So we cannot use, maybe we cannot use the new capabilities of the kernel, such as the C group V2 or other fantastic features. The first thing we need to take consideration is the CPU isolation. About the CPU scheduler, uh, here is the application model in our data, in our data center. Uh, maybe it's not a typical one, but it does happen. Uh, let me uh, simplify it. Its uh, process contains 16 threads uh, running in four CPUs. Uh, here is the problem with um, why we use CPU quota in group to limit the CPU usage. Um, on the left, you can see the uh, why you counter the uh, CPU time in one uh, per second. You can find the CPU usage is quite sta stable. But why you look into it? Uh, you counter the CPU time 
every 10 microseconds, you can find out that the CPU usage is just like in a roller coaster. It can turbo into 16 CPU at some time. But uh, you may have not noticed that, but it does harm the applications on the host. As you can see in, on the right, is uh, obvious TPS drops in the micro, MySQL server. So uh, it's not acceptable for the applications we have. We can't uh, take the risk at the peak hours while we do the events. Uh, the case I just talked about is just, just the neighbor's performance may got affected by each other. Here is another case that the host service may also got harmed while there are some naughty applications in the guest. We did a comparison uh, using the virtualization and, is, uh, and the C group. While uh, using C group, the guest workloads increased intensively, and the host service latency increased a lot. But while use virtualization, the services on the host got protected and the latency does not change much. The next key resources in the system is memory. The memory model and the management is quite complicated in the system. Without virtualization on the host, if you use the C group, uh, we have many kinds of memories, such as the slabs, the active file mapping, and inactive file mapping anonymous memory, and so on. And applications are sharing page caches, uh, even if you use the C group or other isolation uh, solutions. Also, the KSWAPD can, can scan and reclaim the memory system-wide. So while the kernel system, the kernel process do their job, the, all the applications may got affected. So you may have encountered a problem while the kernel do a page cache right back. While we use a virtualization, the memory on the host is much simpler. It's just active not anonymous mapping on the host. The page cache is fully isolated and the KSWAPD is limited in per VM. The simplify of the memory management brings us is much less pain in the cluster operation, which is very important you know, from the IDC operators. It saves us a lot of time to debug for the user applications, the performance issues. Um, the last point that affects our decision uh, for the hybrid is IO. Actually, there are a lot of resource resources in the system. Some of them you may have never noticed that, such as the ext4 journal. Before you encounter a problem, you may never think about the ext4 journal is this matters. Um, if, you, if you are lucky to find the root courses, it may have taken a lot of time to debug for it. Here is the practical outage in our server. Um, we found that the user reports report as there is a TBS drop in their MySQL server, and after a long time debugger, we found out that it's actually because the ext4 journal is locked uh, in, at that time. Uh, there is a huge file is deleted on the host at that time. So the meta info like the inode and the meta info like the file system journal is not processed in parallel in a shared kernel. So uh, those three main aspects uh, made our decision to choose virtualization. And uh, the hybrid deployment solution has run in product for almost a year in our IDC. Uh, in this year, we have encountered a lot of issues and practical issues. So next, I will introduce Zhengwei to uh, introduce the issues and how we uh, 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 solve it. Uh, next, uh, let me introduce some improvements for virtualization we did. Uh, last year, when we started the hybrid deployment, we hit the first problem because the object storage service was still running on host server, so we can't upgrade the host kernel and the kernel modules, but troubleshooting was still necessary, so we developed the KVM utils. Uh, KVM utils is based on KProb, so it could be installed or removed very easily. 
On the other hand, we also developed the benchmark tool site. The micro benchmark include PIO, MMIO, Timer, API. We also built the micro benchmark into our kernel working flow. So a patch before being merged into our kernel, it would be fully tested. So we can know a patch uh, uh, hurt the performance or not. Uh, it's an example of KVM utils debug function. On the left side, uh, it's KVM X the reason statistic. In this picture, we can see that uh, the uh, right MESA and the uh, heart are the main VMX reason. On the right side, it's the right MESA detail information. Uh, in this picture, we can see uh, there are 40,000 ICR requests. So we can know at that moment uh, a lot of IPI occur in guests. <coughs> KVM utils helped us a lot uh, to find the performance bottleneck of our system and uh, application. Here is the two cases. Uh, case one, uh, about several months ago, uh, someone told me that the Cisco get time of day uh, responds slowly than Euro, and uh, I found that PIO uh, VMX it uh, increased uh, intensively. Uh, it, turned out, it turned out that guess the OS clock source is set as AC PI PM only because we disabled the KVM clock and uh, missed the TSC reliable in put argument. Uh, the second case, uh, right uh, MSR TSC deadline, VM exit over one million. Uh, the reason was that TCP congestion control BBR write time a lot. After changing to Westwood, uh, the performance get great improvement. Uh, the second problem, uh, there are 48 CPU on a host. Uh, reserve 12 CPU for OSS server and launch a VM with 36 vCPU. Uh, there are eight queues of a virtual function interface. We usually bind IRQ affinity to vCPU 0 to 7. <clears throat> but uh, there are only about 150K to 500K interrupt per second in gas. So vCPU 0 to 7 uh, are always not busy enough. A typical case like this, uh, a net packet reaches at uh, virtual function interface, then the vCPU will be waked up by post interrupt wake up event. After processing the net packet, v uh, the vCPU will run hot instruction and leave VM mode. So too many VM exit are generated by hot and uh, PI wake up. Uh, or worse yet, the latency of uh, interrupt processing gets uh, unstable. Uh, the latency, latency of uh, online service uh, also gets uh, affected. We want to reduce these VM exit, uh, but uh, currently the kernel only supports idle pool or no hot it means that all of the CPU would run in poly mode. Uh, we need to avoid the performance drop by hyper-thread poly, uh, balance host and guest <coughs> CPU consumption. So we developed a no-heart list. Uh, no-heart list kernel parameter allows the specified CPU to run in poly mode. Uh, we can configure uh, boot argument like this, uh, IRQ affinity. Uh, zero to seven, no hard list uh, zero to seven. Then only vCPU zero to seven will run in poly mode. 
Mm, I selected a random one thousand online server, uh, collected a posted in the wrap, wake up event every second, draw the distribution graph on the left side, uh, without no hard list feature. There are about 500 server have about 20,000 PIW per second. About 300 server have 40,000 PIW per second. The other server have more. On the right side, with no hard list feature, almost all of the CPU, all of the server have only a few PIW, almost zero. Mm, at the same time, the latency of our online service uh, get better and uh, more stable. Uh, the third problem, uh, we, we hit several performance drop amplified in VM. Uh, for example, uh, ATOP is a Linux system monitor tool. It always try to collect instruction per cycle's detail information by PMU. In virtualization case, uh, guest OS will trigger uh, write MSR and RDPMC every 10 seconds. We want to resolve this problem, so we made ATOP smart. <coughs> ATOP will auto-detect hypervisor during startup. If detecting successfully, uh, ATOP will auto-disable IPC collection. So uh, the ATOP will never trigger uh, extra VM exit in a guest. Uh, another case, uh, JMalloc is a user space memory management library. Uh, it has better performance than uh, glibc ptmalloc on malloc free, especially on multi-thread uh, case. But jmalloc uh, try to free physical memory to kernel by the syscall I'm advised don't need. Then trigger a lot of TRB shutdown. Uh, as well known, uh, API is really expensive in, in, in virtualization. Mm. PV send API feature uh, makes the API broadcast more effective. But in my experience, the API is still the performance bottleneck of catch service. Um, about several problems and uh, uh, solution I mentioned above, uh, I want to introduce a common method how to find the performance bottleneck then we can optimize uh, not only the kernel side, but also um, application. I think uh, maybe uh, more application should be adapted to virtualization case. Uh, the last I want to share is the achievement we have made. Uh, the data side is random 7,000 hosts. On left side, bef before hybrid deployment, almost uh, all of the server run under 10% CPU utilization. On the right side, after hybrid deployment, uh, most of the server have higher CPU utilization. Uh, at the same time, we can provide millions of costs for online service uh, because of the high level resolution from KVM. The host uh, object storage service get pro protected uh, and after uh, tuning the performance in gas get close to the bare metal. So I can see with confidence that KVM could do better 
on hybrid the deployment in the future. Mm, thank you. It's QA time. How did you reduce the frequency of the TSC deadline timer exits? Oh, in fact, uh, we we didn't uh, reduce the uh, the the the, um, uh, the the latency of uh, uh red time SR TSC deadline. Uh, because the TCP congestion control uh, algorithm BBR writes timer a lot, we change the, the algorithm to West Wood. We just uh, let the guest write timer uh, less. Sorry, did you say you let the guest write through? Actually, uh, it's because from um, uh, in the guest we have several uh, TC uh, TCP congestion uh, control methods such as BBR, such as uh, Westwood, um, well, uh, and Kubi, and maybe some others. But uh, we we find that while we use in BBR, the Redis uh, performance is uh, drops a lot uh, compared to the bare metal. So we try to find out uh, the reason and. Uh, we found out uh, it's because the too many TS deadline exit, and we so we changed the TCP congestion control method. Uh, yeah, so we don't reduce we we don't uh, find the way in KVM. We just find the way the applications use it. Yes. Yes. Uh, we we because uh, we provide a uh, public. More private cloud, we can control the guest. So we use the best um, TCP congestion control algorithm. It seems that uh, Westwood has better performance than uh, BBR in guest. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much.